This setting is resumed. Prior to suspension, this house was in standing finance committee. To that, we shall resume. And then Finance Committee resumes with the Honorable Member from S for St. Philip South. Thank you, Madam Chair. And like all of my colleagues, I'm happy to see you back in the chair. Um, my question, I will start first of all with Manager School Me Services. Um, because I noted the answer given when the Honorable Member for St. Michael South Central raised the issue of agricultural, primary agriculture produce. Um, we did create what is called the Farmers Empowerment and Enfranchisement Drive where Cabinet agree that 60% of government's procurement should go to this program and that that should be facilitated through the Park House at the BADMC. Uh, the program deals with um, livestock farming as well as non-sugar agriculture. Uh, the BADMC would have reached out to the Skoumis Department uh, to be able to respond to a request for bids to go in for the school means department. And the list of items that they have identified are watermelons, beans, beets, carrots, cucumbers, cabbage, pumpkin, lettuce, sweet peppers, tomatoes. Um, I do believe that um, there needs to be some clarity in terms of what would have transpired because I know you said that you haven't started conversation. The BIDMC is telling me something to the contrary. And so why I would not relish in trying to make it look as though there is Conflicting information, I would want to make sure that the communication is improved. And so therefore, I would want to ask you, how are you procuring right now these things for the school maze department? Um, currently, the ADMC, they were awarded a tender. Uh, this would have been done through government procurement. They would have submitted their information and they were awarded the tender to supply us with certain vegetables and other products including um, the beef and bread fruit burger that they produce. So we are getting those things from them. Like I said, that is through the tender process. Um, however, in, in referencing the, the dialogue between us and the Ministry of Agriculture, we, we would have been approached by BADMC, they would have been advised as to how to go about the tender process and such the like. However, there was no real formal um, meeting or discussion between the school music department and the Ministry of Agriculture or the BADMC. That would have been all done through our tender process. So they're supplying us right now through tender. They have made us aware of their other products and um, such. We've actually started using one product, which is the sweet potato cake mix. So we're aware of their products and stuff. But what we're getting from them now is what we're getting the tender that they were awarded. I'm, I'm drilling down to a further point because I'm aware that you're only using two of their products. I'm aware that you're only using two of the long list that I just called out. Um, you are in fact using the Carmita's product mm -hmm. 
which is the sweet potato, the breadfruit burger or sausage, but the, those are processed things. I'm talking about primary agriculture, right, like, like which, said. which are, and, and I have the document in front of me, which I can make a document of the house, if mm -hmm. you saw the very matter here. Uh, what I'm saying is that I would rather if the conversation takes place, because I know the correspondence went off to the ministry, and I'm not here to seek to justify anything, but just to make sure that what can be done to make sure that the farmers in Spring Hall, for example, the, f the farmers in Spring Hall, for example, Are you hearing me now? Yes. So I'm saying that there are farmers, for example, in Spring Hall who depend on the Pat House facility at BADMC to be able to move their produce. There are farmers at River as well, and there are farmers in the Farmers Empowerment and Enfranchisement Drive, or what we acronize as FEED, um, are also relying on the BADMC Pat House. This is very important because when we, when we launched the feed program, the decision made by the cabinet was for 60% of all primary agriculture produce go to government procurement. And uh, this may not necessarily be your decision, but it is something that you must be aware of because correspondence also went to the ministry from the BADMC to clarify this point. Um, if you're not aware of it, it would therefore mean that I will have to then ask the BADMC to have the correspondence resent and then uh, let us sit down and discuss it because it is too important for those farmers who are involved in this project uh, for them not to be getting the benefit of supplying to the school means. The other thing is because of our involvement with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, where we are doing the parliamentary fronts against hunger, it speaks to how children are being fed and under any school feeding program. And the committee for that at the ministry is currently constituted and we'll be reaching out to the ministry um, so that we can all be on the same page. But I would strongly recommend that we have some kind of review of what was sent to the ministry so that the school maze department can be aware that these items are actually consistently supplied in Barbados, consistently, to the extent that they have to go to street vending and all types of different vending to get rid of the produce. I think the department is aware, but like I said, we, we have the two things that I mentioned, those were outside of the actual agricultural produce. We're getting sweet potatoes. They're our only supplier of sweet potatoes right now. They're supplying us with a few other things. I don't have the list committed to memory, but there are at least five other things that the ADMC is currently supplying us with. Um, but like I said, it is awarded through tender. So unless there's some way around that, the, as, it, as it is right now, they would have to submit the tender documents and then it's a matter of are you selected to supply these products. Now, now that you have mentioned it, um, I will take it up. Minister, you and I can deal with this. Uh, this is not something that we can resolve now. But I'm just making you aware of the decision that was taken. Um, the other thing, uh, I minister this is to you directly. Um, the four rows are uh, the Rana Weeks Primary School. Rana Weeks Primary School uh, had some changes, and in those changes, the bathrooms, um, many of the bathrooms that the children use, are located a distance from some of the blocks, and there is no cover or any roof for them to get to the bathroom when it's raining. Uh, this is a problem that the head teacher raised. He said he had raised it on more than one occasion. And so therefore, um, given that 
the Rana Ritz Primary School is in the heart of St. Philip South. I, it would be remiss of me if I didn't use this occasion to let the head teacher know that um, I have um, done my parochial duty in asking that it be looked into. I just want to remind the honorable member that given what we have inherited, we cannot venture into be, being becoming too parochial at this point because the Ministry of Education has to take the approach in relation to addressing the problems in the plant based on priorities. So I appreciate that the case has been made in relation to what you need and that you're advocating for it, but I caution you and others that we have to address it on priorities. When I speak of water, bills that are rising because we have problems with our pipes, that is a priority that we need to address because it means that it has the ability to impact on us all. When I speak about environmental issues that will affect the productivity of the teachers and the students being able to be in the institutions, those things become a priority. And so I just want to, I, 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 I welcome and I know how we have been accustomed to making the case for individual constituencies and any issues that you alert us to, um, the, the members in the ministry know to note them and to give due consideration to them. But I just want to remind you that given the difficult constraints that we are facing, we really do have to prioritize. And I think the message has to go out to all of the persons who use the schools that really we need to you know, look at what are high priority items and, and get to the other things in the course of time as we can. All right? On the issue of what you mentioned, Minister, in relation to the tendering process, I think the manager for school meals was making the point that it really, while being sensitive to what the Ministry of Agriculture through BADMC can provide um, is relevant, at the same time it goes through a procurement process. I think the view is often that the Ministry of Education makes a decision in relation to who is awarded the contract and then what types of items are supplied, but that is not the truth. Um, so I just want to clarify for, for you that while the, the intention of government is to ensure that um, the produce as much as possible, both in the tourism sector and in the education certainly can come from the, this um, the source at the same time I, I think I don't think the manager of school meals can do more at this point than note it and I think the relevant authorities will have to take it up yourself will have to take it up obviously at the level of procurement committee as well as through the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education to settle that issue All right thank you honorable member for st. John thank you madam chair uh, my question for the minister is related to the St. John's Primary School. Um, this is a plant that is over 100 years old. And if not every year, every term, persons are being um, transferred from the school. Uh, my question is, what are the plans for St. John's Primary School? Um, in addition to that, I, I'm not sure if the ministry is responsible for the traffic wardens, but at that particular location, it's um, a serious, serious situation in not having somebody at the location to man traffic for those youngsters who are crossing the road. But the primary concern from the teachers, students, and parents, and myself is what are the plans for the plant at St. John's Primary. I, I'm aware that as a government we are strapped for funds, but I, I seriously believe that it is time for a new plan at that particular location. And on a weekly basis, the questions are coming in terms of what can be done. I'm going to hand over to Mr. Miller, the director of ETMU acting shortly, but I, I want to just draw to your attention, member, that um, last year, um, I think when we were doing our tours of the, summer, the schools during the summer for the domestic summer program, we paid a visit to St. John Primary, and I was very concerned about the conditions there at the time. Um, I think while we were on site, one of the 
Um, as you know, it's a soft stone building. And one of the, sorry, one of the areas at the building was open. And as a consequence, <coughs> which is probably happening to me right now, um, Um, Francisco Miller, acting director, ETMU. Um, essentially, what the minister was referring to is that last year, when we toured the school, there was an environmental issue there in which mold was present. Okay, there was mold present at the school. Um, essentially, the school is, um, is part soft stone and block work. And essentially, um, what happened is that there was a roof leak and the moisture was just getting into the wall of the school. So essentially they had some closed up um, cupboards and we had to take them out. We had some more remediation, we cleaned and stuff like that. But the problem remained because the roof was not fixed. We have subsequently fixed the roof and essentially we carried out um, industrial cleaning of the school. But as the member of parliament is aware that there were some um, excavation being done um, by the Barbados Water Authority and mm -hmm. a, the school was again impacted by that mm -hmm. and again we, we carried out some cleaning and stuff like that so essentially it, um, the work at the school is ongoing um, we are trying to implement a preventative maintenance program to deal with these issues because we know that we will have to continue to spend at, um, on these soft stone buildings mm -hmm. in order to, to minimize the discomfort and the impacts of persons who would have had compromised respiratory um, systems. So we will, this is an ongoing thing. We, we, we can't build a new plant right now, but we are gonna try to make it as comfortable as possible going forward. Just, just a follow-up question in relation to the traffic warden. Who would make representation to have that particular individual in place to protect the lives um, of these youngsters? We will write the Ministry of Public Work mm -hmm. and request a traffic warden for the area. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with that being said, I am responsible for five primary schools in my area. All of them are my favorites, but I have to bring up the St. Mark School. Because right now, they're, they're existing with 150-odd students. Some would have come from the now defunct Society Primary School. And they're existing on the same size plant. They have now removed the platform where children could, could express their creati creativity to replace it with classrooms. The space they have to play is about a quarter of so much of this building. Are there any plans for that? I've, I've requested for other ministries, um, sidewalks, for instance, to get them safely to the playing field, to avoid pit bulls. Um, I know St. Catharines, they have right now, this, with the school meals, they have one server to, so, to, to, to provide meals for 140 odd students without hot water. So one can only imagine the days with greasy foods. Um, are there any plans to fill some of those positions? I would have written the ministry on it before. In terms of the hot, um, the hot water, um, mm -hmm. it is not ideal, and essentially we will rectify that, that issue ASAP. Thank you so much. Honorable Member for St. Thomas. You're welcome. I saw my bus, but I beg your pardon. I would just want to put forward my final comments in relation to our discussions here today. And uh, the first one I would want to look at, the least I forget it, is to do with my great concern for strong leadership and management in some of our schools. I know that all schools will not have all bright children, were all schools having bright children, I would not be here. And therefore, I believe that it is critical that some serious, or more serious, because I know the Honorable Minister and her team are trying, 
um, matters be put in place to ensure that our schools are properly managed. And I say this because Barbados is still a very stigmatized society when it comes to children who are late developers and poor people's children, and that is a fact. And therefore, I want to take this opportunity to highly commend the Honorable Minister and the members of staff, whether they be the professionals in the office or those persons who help to make sure that the cleaning, the school needs workers and so are fulfilling their role. I, I want to acknowledge their contribution. But my most critical concern is that the same common entrance that we mentioned before and those schools that we consider to be newer secondary schools where in the past there was an exhibition called, it was sponsored by the Lumber Company, Annual Industrial Arts Exhibition, thank you. And there was no year that any of the secondary schools in Barbados of the older grammar school vintage ever came close to those six or seven schools that we see continuously at the bottom when it comes to recognition by people who don't understand the challenges that late developers may have or children who are at risk in whatever way. And I believe it's about time we change the mindset and I accept and I highly commend the minister for making that bold step and the People's Assembly is another forum through which dialogue can take place within communities because that gives people a voice to be able to say what they want and how they will want it. And we stigmatize these secondary schools. And ma'am, if you would allow me to big up, according to the young people, a school called St. George Secondary that was pushed down in the gutter in the 1990s early as a result of something somebody called an expose. And I am proud to say today, having visited there a month ago, it is one of the safest, most productive schools environments I've been in in a long time. Don't care what level it is at, at the up 22 or 23 secondary schools we have. And it only goes to show that the management and the leadership in our schools can make the difference. You do not see the children misbehaving on the street, according to what I witnessed, and I'm a girl all over the place. You do not see, ma'am, the noise level is so low. And I spent up until 4 o'clock at that school from the morning about 9.30. And it was not a putting on because all in the hall, all in the environment, children were busy. You know what? Because that thing called schools of excellence will bring us back to that level where St. George, Princess Margaret, St. Leonard's Boys, Grantley Adams, St. Lucy Secondary, LRC Secondary, I can't remember if the garrison was one, I may have left out one because I'm getting younger now. But the point I'm making is those schools excelled in the performing arts, the visual arts, and so on. And something has happened over the years that has caused those, school, those schools to be pushed to the background. And therefore, I want to indicate my joy and my pride knowing all of those children did not go into those newer secondary schools when any 30 or 40 percent, some have gone in with 60 and 75 percent. And those children are now falling through the cracks. Yes, it still takes a whole village to raise the children. And parents must take their responsibilities and guardians like myself. But when it comes to what is happening and the culture that is impacting on them within the communities and there's no proper supervision, no give back, no mentoring, no hand holding. It is really having a deleterious impact on our youth and leading some of them down the path of wrongdoing. And so I want to say we need to focus as a country that's developing to focus on schools of excellence. Barbadians who lived abroad all in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, sent back their children to Barbados for an education. That has no slackened up because we have dipped when it comes to what is happening on our plants and sometimes what is being offered. And so I want to, if you will allow me, ma'am, to call the name of a child at St. George who is not a bright, bright boy. You can tell, but he's a part of the cadets, the discipline. 
Y'all remember for the city would agree with me. The discipline. And then, because he's not academically sound, according to Holman, picking, picking it up, his hands and this necklace, this set, Madam, De Ma Madam um, Chair, and these earrings, that child made them, has them properly packaged and ready for sale. It has copper and all that interwoven in it. I didn't wear it for this purpose, but I just wanted to show how we can make the difference if we partition out children in the areas where they have strength and guide them with good discipline and so on. The other final point I would wish to make, ma'am, is associated with <laughs> disaster management. And I am not happy at all with what I'm seeing at most of our schools. But when I reflect, I think that the Honorable Minister and her team have done an excellent job because we, in that last decade, that last decade too, would have seen schools fall apart because there were not schools situated in constituencies that the members of parliament in the last administration had. And now, every week, another school has to be closed because of the challenges when we are in a BERT program. So we know we have to cut costs. According to the old people, cut the cloth, to, the, the, the style to suit the cloth. And so I want to find out from these distinguished members here, ma'am, how many schools have got water tanks or need to have water tanks installed? Because water outages destroy a lot of the quality time in schools, businesses, homes, but particularly in schools when parents have three-year-olds, five-year-olds, eight-year-olds, and they leave them, and by nine o'clock you're here, go back home because there's no water. So I want to know where this ministry is at in relation to it. I have one category, um, one school in the parish where I happen to live, and uh, that school has got shutters that were installed before, but the doors and the windows are in a bad shape. And I want to know what plans the ministry has in helping us, because if you're talking over 12,000 people in that constituency eligible to vote, not mentioning young people, and there is any serious disaster because of the climate change, climatic changes, where will my people go if that happens when the doors are as flimsy as if the wind blows, they blow out? and they open back doors. I want to know what plans are there for the Leicester Vaughan School to be able to get some of the funding, some of the works that these distinguished men and ladies are doing to be able to carry this project forward when we know you cannot predict the weather. We're only human beings. I would like to know how the ministry is coping with it. Um, and as we talk about this year is Vision 2020, we gathering. And we are calling it give back to take back because we have to take back our society. And I know that there are a lot of people in communities who do not want funds. They do not want recognition, but they want to serve. They want to give back for free, to mentor, to guide, to protect, to help our youth. And it is no comfort when we see the young people around us having to be arrested for shoplifting, for shooting and getting involved in violent acts because of the lawlessness that is permeating our villages and our communities. There are people out there who want to help, and I'm encouraging the ministry, as all other um, communities, uh, um, ministries and other institutions are, to help us to continue to work assiduously in setting up programs by opening up our schools that costs millions of dollars in the evening, we still have strong community people who will say, give me the key. I will hold responsibility when I go in, and I will give it back to the neighbor or whoever, but we have some McGuffies who say, not in my school. So the community is left away. Our communities helped to build the schools because we worked in them. I never had any school meals as a child. I never had any of these things that people are having, but we used to turn our uniforms on the wrong side and scrub our desks. There were no janitors. We cleaned the school's environs. We did everything. And I'm saying I don't want any retrograde steps. I just want for us to embrace, get the intergenerational links going that our children can enjoy building good character. Looking at a good values education system. Learn how to make sacrifices. 
Honorable I member? Not be in, not be in, uh, yeah, yes, allow them to answer. I thank you, ma'am. If I had had the chance this morning, it would have not been put the three in one. But I want to thank you, and I just want to hear how the ministry is planning because there are people in the communities around me who want to help but they just want to be given that opportunity to access the facilities to be able to do it. Many children go to school for six hours. Another 18 hours of the day, they have loose time that they can do quality things. I want to thank you, ma'am. Um, to answer your question on the number of water tanks, we would have installed eight, nine water tanks. Mm. Um, at, at your school at Lester Vaughan, we would have placed two portable water tanks. Um, we would have um, Lester Vaughan is one of the first um, Category 1 hurricane shelters. Um, initially, the Prime Minister, uh, the, uh, pardon? Yes. Um, one of the issues at Lester Vaughan was the fact that when we did the initial assessment, um, the, air, the, the office that the shelter warden has, no provision was made for the fabric, shelter, uh, fabric shutter at that. And that was drawn to our attention by the chairman. And we are actively pursuing that. We will have that rectified. In terms of the rural shutters, we would have installed the rural shutters. The doors, on the other hand, is, was the responsibility of the school to rectify that. So in terms of the, the windows and stuff like that, the, the program covered that in terms of the fabric shutters. Um, Lester Vaughan also, in terms of the generators, Lester Vaughan would have received a generator as well as um, fire extinguishers in terms for the shelter area. Um, they were not under the bathroom program for the uh, disaster preparedness, but that also was taken care of under the initiative, uh, the bathroom upgrade initiative by the Prime Minister in which each school received $95,000. And that would, that would take care of the, of the bathroom upgrade that, that you would be looking forward to. Um, in terms of the other, the, the other infrastructural issues, you now the school would have taken, would have sorted that out in terms of the environmental issues that was in, impacting them in terms of their IT room and their music room. The school would have taken at the initiative to rectify that by the installation of AC units in both the music room as well as the IT room. Uh, anything I covered there? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So, if I can, if I can, touch on the other, essentially, we would have um, identified 21 shelters, category one shelters, 21 in the initial in the initial outlay. Subsequently, we have, ex, um, we have expanded that to about 38, but mm -hmm. funding has been provided for 21, in which we would have uh, placed uh, fabric as well as roll shutters at the 21 of them, as well as we have the provision for generators at each one of them. In addition, we would have upgraded some bathrooms at some primary schools, and those were predominantly category two shelters but there were some category one in there and there were about 12 of them and I can list them here for you in which they have been completed. A. The Costa Edwards Primary, All Saints Primary, Cuthbert Moore, Hilda Skeen, Hilda B. Turner's Hall, Hinesbury, Lawrence T. Gay, Sela, Sharon Primary, St. George Primary, St. Jo St. Joseph Primary was deferred. That was because there were um, it had started late and we didn't want to disrupt school that much. We have completed Westbury Primary and West Terrace. To date, we have installed 10 generators and mm -hmm. those were installed at Cuthbert Moore, um, Commamere, Kojampari, Gordon Greenwich, Queens College, um, Lester Vaughan. Um, the last one mm -hmm. is supposed to be Christchurch Foundation. And by the end of this, this month, those will, be, those will be completed. We would have, yes, exactly. Originally, we would, we would have sought 
to do it by, by um, procuring it from two contractors, two suppliers. Unfortunately, the timelines for the delivery and installation um, would have put us well into the hurricane season. So we, are, we have prepared a paper and we are seeking to, to procure the other 10 by single source. So as soon as cabinet gives us the, the go ahead, we will, we will have those in by June 1st. <clears throat> Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, add some for the four questions here, which reference the numbers, but I, a little tired of the numbers, no? I want to ask the minister a couple of questions, which are more general, more philosophical, ideological. Um, first has to do with the presence of the Ross University Offshore Medical School in Barbados. No doubt its presence here brings significant uh, financial economic benefits to the country. Um, I have long been of the view and saying that there should be a deliberate effort made on our part to seriously market ourselves as a jurisdiction for offshore schools, particularly out of North America and, and even Europe. And I do not think that we have to uh, confine ourselves to a focus on offshore medical facilities. Barbados obviously should have been a leader with respect to that long ago, and that story has been told many times. But we are now there, and we're finding some benefits from the Ross presence. But I wonder if there's a deliberate and calculated effort made to promote the country as a jurisdiction with some attractiveness and appeal for offshore facilities, institutional, academic, and other training facilities uh, in areas such as perhaps forensics, um, um, issues and subject matter around technology and innovation, development of software, and there are lots of other areas that are very popular um, in North America today. Barbados has certainly the infrastructural facilities, certainly the uh, educational base, and other uh, attractive factors that can make us a, a first or early choice in, in institutions that may be looking for some place to domicile themselves outside of their normal jurisdiction. I wonder if there's any deliberate calculated thought given to that and any work with the Ministry of Tourism, perhaps, to promote us in that regard? That's one question. And the second one is a little bit more uh, sensitive, I suppose. Uh, recently, we had uh, an incident, an instance, where there was a controversy before, the, before our schooling system, education system, with respect to gender identity. I think that had to do with a private institution and apparently has been resolved. <coughs> Is the ministry or has the ministry anticipated that the, the public school system may in fact be faced with that type of challenge uh, considering the times in which we live? And if so, what is the likely response or position from the ministry on a matter a matter like that. I like to deal in these realities. You see them coming down the road, and I wonder if the ministry is anticipating a challenge in a similar context as the one that existed last year or year before, and what is the likely position? <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Member. Um, in relation to your first comments regarding Ross University and the ministry's position, with respect to an aggressive program for attracting offshore medical schools, whether in relation to medicine or veterinary or dental um, or any other area for that matter. I want to start by saying to you that Barbados, first of all, in this administration had to focus primarily on letting the world know that Barbados was open for business. We had been suffering tremendously from obviously the decline in our credit ratings. Um, we had obviously been in a difficult financial position and obviously for any investor 
the market has to be suitable for people to want to come and invest. So yes, we have a high level of education. Um, yes, we are a very service-oriented economy. But in the same token, people are only going to invest in an economy where they believe that they are going to be able to get their money out when they put their money in. That said, I know that there have been some who have been critical about the Honorable Prime Minister's travel, but I think we have already seen the benefits of her being able to travel and to be able to speak with one voice for this nation and certainly for the region in the global community. And I think that that has started to open up the interest and certainly a lot of doors of, across the global corridors in relation to investment in Barbados. And I know that there is interest out there, um, not just from the offshore medical schools, but a number of other schools in various disciplines who are interested in investing. As you would appreciate, there is still a process. Um, many of these institutions that are seeking to invest often want to either find real estate to purchase or they're looking for real estate to invest in. And the ministry has already a procedure in place for persons who are interested. Um, so as those um, applications come, um, we will certainly deal with them accordingly. Um, the Minister of Tourism as well, we've been in communication in regards to tapping into the markets as he is traveling as well. Um, and I think that the, the policy of the government is to really, first of all, open up the markets as much as possible, um, which is why we have gone back into a number of territories that traditionally we would not have been in or that we were not making enough noise in to let people know that Barbados was open for business yet again. Um, in relation to your second point, I recall having to speak with the principal of that particular institution at the time when that story broke regarding the issues of gender. Um, I, I am realizing more and more in this debate that you are preoccupied with the issues of gender. Um, and I would like to think that it is more um, for the purpose of us just having to have a discussion on issues that are perhaps on the horizon or that you are anticipating. I have not had as minister yet to deal with a matter such as that in public education. Um, I believe that on the occasion when I addressed the principal of that school, I indicated very clearly that the respect for laws and certainly any laws that were discriminatory, um, we have a constitution and any private institution would have to obviously um, comply with the legislative framework. So I will say to you in similar tone, the same thing I said then, which is that we all respect law and order. And in terms of human rights, this is a country that has respected human rights for decades. I don't think this administration has a different record from last I checked. And as those issues arise, as a ministry and as a government, we will certainly deal with those issues. But I have not been confronted with that as yet. Um, but just as with everything else, we will deal with the issues as they arise. Now, um, Madam Chair, that was marvelously political as a response. And um, it was well said, but in fact conveyed uh, to me nothing that I had not known before. I assume that you had not yet been confronted with such an issue with respect to the public schools, and you, you reconfirmed or reaffirmed that. But and I know Barbados has due regard and deference for the laws of the country and for human and civil rights. But I don't know that it has brought me to an understanding of if an, in an instance like that were to arise tomorrow and the challenge be made on the Parkinson School that the ministry is anticipating or has anticipated that and is likely to make a response in a certain direction. I, I was hoping to get a little bit more uh, than, than I got. That is regrettable that you expected more than you got, but that sometimes happens. Um, even <laughs> um, remember, I, 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 I understand where you're going, and I understand that you would want me to say things that I really am not in a position to speak to. I think in fairness, we, we deal with issues as an administration as they arise, and we're not going to do anything that is going to um, harm anyone's human rights. 
Um, but at the same time, we have not been confronted with that issue within the public school system. I mean, we've been confronted with issues of homeschooling, and we have dealt with it as an administration, um, we've, where we've had issues of even making allowances for persons in the school system who may need extra time. We've dealt with it as the issues have arisen. So it is not to say that this is an administration that is not responsive when there are issues confronting the society. But equally, I, I'm not sure if you are familiar with the facts of that particular case, but to try to weasel into this discussion um, similarities or to try to place this minister on the front foot or the back foot of an issue that has not confronted us in public education, I think it would, for me to respond in any other way would be to do an injustice to this ministry and to certainly to this administration. I, Madam Chair, understand the minister's response. Um, and um, I wasn't attempting to weasel anything into the debate. All I'm saying is there is a certain reality that obtains around us in this present world. And sooner or later, these issues will come upon our doorstep. And I would want to think that the ministry is already considering uh, the advice positionally that it is likely to render to the cabinet and the government of Barbados when these things do arise. It is not that Barbados does not face a challenge with respect to gender-related issues. Um, right now, we're facing that position, and, and we have been put on notice that there are those who would want to push a certain agenda. And out of that agenda, things like this will emanate. And I just think that the ministry needs to ready itself um, with a position on these issues. So I appreciate that the minister is rather limited in what she can say today um, on the matter and may have a very personal perspective also that she cannot in her ministerial position uh, express because she is part of a cabinet. But um, I am genuinely trying to suggest that these issues are upon us and we've got to brace ourselves for dealing with them. And I will just reinforce for you, remember that I'd like to deal with things in terms of priorities. I, I, I have learned in the last year to put things in perspective. What you speak of, as I said, I have not been confronted with it, but I will deal with it when that time comes. In relation to what bigger issues we are confronting, which I, I would be interested to hear not only your political perspective, but also a perspective perhaps from the church as well, in relation to issues that are confronting our society and schools in relation to drugs and drug use and the in introduction of what is commonly being referred to as the mollies and the amphetamines that are creeping into the system, um, that is creating more of a problem than the problem that you have just highlighted that is of, on the horizon. Those are the issues that I am preoccupying my mind with and the cabinet of Barbados on a daily basis as to how we deal with it. So not to trivialize the issue that you have raised, but I like to put things in perspective. And I think that that is something that should concern all of us. The fact that young people are using and consuming drugs um, at a younger age, that there are some drugs that have crept into our society in terms of the synthetic drugs, which are presenting some problems in terms of being identified at the ports of entry in a timely manner that in terms of sensitization, that when I look at what certainly I as a young person grew up with, with police coming into the schools and showcasing in a sense the types of drugs that were on the market and providing that type of um, information that was necessary for children to make wise decisions, that that type of investment was eroded by the last administration to the point where those types of surveys and the data that was necessary for a government and certainly the Ministry of Education to act and the police has been eroded. So I am more preoccupied with those bigger issues that are right on our doorstep presently in public education and that we are grappling with as a society than right now dealing with the issues of which you have raised. Like I said, not to trivialize, but I have learned to put things in perspective. Okay, not observing. Anybody else needs to ask a question? 
I will allow the Honorable Member, the Honorable Minister to give her wrap up in 10 minutes. You may give your wrap up, no other questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. At the outset, when I was asked to lead off this debate this um, morning, I reflected on certainly last year's estimates debate when I, was, I started off with a much different tone, thanking everyone for holding my hand through the previous year um, and still being able to keep in contact with my ministry and my staff to be able to carry out the work of the Ministry of Education. And I was very glad that today it wasn't a case of thanking at the level of which I thanked before, but really to say thank you this morning for the Ministry of Education staff being able to share in the vision that I have, articul I have articulated thus far in relation to where this Ministry of Education needs to go to reform the educational landscape for this country. And I really want to thank the team and applaud the team for being able to help us to prepare to delve into various aspects of education and educational reform in today's debate. I want to thank all honorable members who have contributed, um, including the leader of the opposition, um, whose comments I, and, and his positions on matters I, I do value as well because it gives a different perspective sometimes from our own perspective as an administration. I wanted to come here today, ma'am, to ensure that rather than speaking primarily to problems and problems in education, that we took a journey on some of the positive things that were actually happening in the educational system. Because too often, whether it is through the media or through our own accord in terms of what we highlight, sometimes we sensitize things that really don't need to be sensitized. There are some serious and burning issues that have to be addressed, but I think if we focus on a number of the changes that are needed to reform our system, we can see that there are a number of positive things that are on the horizon. Yes, we have to deal with the issues of our decaying plant. Yes, we have to deal with the issues of violence in school. And I believe that in the course of this presentation, we've been able to highlight in particular those two areas which seek to erode particularly the waves that we are making in education. We have invested more as a government than certainly the previous administration, and even in short order in the first year, we were able to add an additional two million to the annual budget for the domestic summer program. We got the schools 17 previously up to 41, and I believe this year, while we may not do as many, we think the intention is certainly to focus on the larger issues and the critical issues that may not have been able to be accomplished in the um, last domestic summer program. I'm excited, ma'am, by the prospects of what can come from a revamped curriculum. Certainly the introduction of the robotics in the schools and the additional devices, the technology um, that we have made provision for, the cabling, the Wi-Fi connectivity, trying to ensure that a lot of the investment that has been made in technology is not gone, pushed one side and that our teachers, our students, our administrators, our ministry officials are all using cutting edge technology to be able to communicate and also to be effective in terms of our learning strategies as well. We continue to and will continue to partner with civil society um, and also to work very closely with partner ministries. Um, I, often said in opposition that I felt that the last administration did not do enough to partner with agencies. Um, I am one that believes that the Ministry of Education touches on almost every ministry, but in particular the social welfare ministries. So we, our approach in terms of a very holistic approach is one that I believe is sound, where we share information, we share the data, and by so doing we are able to address a number of the the problems that have been confronting us as a society. If we fail to invest in education, my view is that we're gonna pay for it in some other form or fashion. One of the things that I would hope that 
we have learned from the tragedies certainly over the last year in particular is that we are all in this together whether it is ministry officials principals teachers unions students parents whatever is happening in our schools that is negative is a reflection on us as an entire society and therefore it is everyone's problem but it is also everyone's um, opportunity to find a way to be able to assist the system. I'm grateful to a number of our stakeholders. We've had some really good stakeholders since I've come to office. Um, UNICEF, the Maria Holder Trust Foundation. Um, there's one recently that has even offered um, to assist us through the Fluency Center to be able to test students for dyslexia. These are all non-governmental organizations, ma'am, that have reached out and I believe have recognized that the Ministry of Education, the government of Barbados cannot do it alone. Whether they have built out schools, whether they have provided assessments for testing, whether they have just basically held out a helping hand to be able to say we understand what you're going through and we are willing to help, I am extremely grateful for that assistance. Our corporate entities as well have answered the call made early on in my tenure, certainly, to tap into resources and uh, that, that exist within their entities to give back to communities. And while these estimates may not go as far as any of us would like to address all of the problems in education, I am actually satisfied that with the partnerships that we have made in the last year, whether it's been with Harris Paints or Sky Mall, or visual artists who offered to assist us to be able to paint murals and to come on board, or just the ordinary Barbadian parent who wanted to be able to assist us at the schools when we were confronted with problems. I say to you that all is not lost, ma'am, in relation to education. There continue to be a number of positives that I think that we can continue to champion and that we can certainly continue to build on. With respect to bringing technology and vocational training under the Ministry of Education. Um, I think that we have been able to strengthen what existed previously in our secondary schools, and I think that the platform has been laid now for us to continue to map for students the pathways to success in the technical and vocational area. It is my hope that someday we will have more scholarships in relation to exhibitions and scholarships at the national level that are in the technical and vocational areas because I think that will also signal to the country and certainly to the world how serious we are. We've made inroads in relation to the scholarships, but I think the next, um, the ne next signal would be our, our exhibition winners and stuff being able to have a stream through which they can also benefit from being engaged in the skills and the vocational areas as well. So ma'am, I am pleased to have presented these estimates and to have not only imparted my own knowledge, but also had the opportunity from my staff to impart their own knowledge as well, and also to be able to field the questions that have come from um, members here today in relation to education. The perspective that has been given in relation to the reforms that are due to come in, um, on the common entrance are also welcome. And as I've said before, I will restate again that we welcome the conversation with the country because that is really what it is. We have always said that we will consult. We've done it in every single thing that we have done thus far on coming to office and I anticipate that the conversation on the reform of education and particularly the common entrance exam will be no different. We will speak with all of our stakeholders, give them ample opportunity to contribute to the discussion. It is our hope that this would be the last year, but as I have stated, we start the discussion and that is what the Honorable Prime Minister has said to the country on several occasions, that I will return to start the discussion and the conversation with the country. So we start that conversation in March, ma'am. It is intended that the committee um, will be able to establish a number of meeting points for persons to be able to contribute to the discussions. Um, we will also be setting up an email address where persons locally and outside can basically weigh in on the discussion as well. Um, but we will try to circulate to the widest possible um, medium so that persons feel that they can be engaged in the entire um, process. I therefore want to thank all of you for the contributions. I look forward to further participation 
in the estimates debate. And with those few words, ma'am, I beg to move that head 87 do now stand part. Question is that head 87 in the sum of $320,144,028 stand part. Are honorable members in favor, please say aye. Are honorable members against, please say nay. Who thinks the ayes have it? Madam Chair, I beg to move that you do now report progress to His Honor the Speaker and ask for leave to sit again. Question is, I do now report to the Honorable Speaker the pass in, of one bill in committee. All honorable members in favor, please say aye. All honorable members against, please say nay. Methinks the ayes have it. The chairman has reported progress and requests leave to sit again. Honorable Senator Bridgestone. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that the sitting be suspended until 10 a.m. tomorrow in the forenoon. To suspend? To be suspended or adjourned? Suspended? The question that this honorable chamber be suspended until 10 a.m. on tomorrow's day in the forenoon. All those honorable members in favor, please say aye. Those against, please say no. Meeting the eyes of it. This honorable chamber stands suspended until 10 a.m. in the forenoon tomorrow. <laughs>